Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you uh, a spherical geometry um, toolkit or environment that I have created in GeoGebra. Uh, so if you open this file that I call spherical geometry environment, uh, and here it is. Uh, let's see here if I can. Here's the link to it right here directly. And if you go into this, you will want to open it in the app. So make sure you have all the tools available. So when you open it up, you see a sphere here. This is a unit sphere. It's a sphere, sphere centered at 0, 0, 0 as far as a Euclidean object. It's a sphere of radius 1 centered at the origin. You have your regular Euclidean uh, 3D tools here that you normally have in GeoGebra. And then I have... Uh, toolkits here, uh, uh, collections of customized tools for working with spherical geometry. Now, spherical geometry is a type of geometry just as legitimate as regular Euclidean plane geometry. In fact, in some cases, it's more applicable because, of course, we essentially live on the surface of a sphere, at least more or less. And so uh, we can define objects like we would normally do in Euclidean geometry, we can define them and use them in spherical geometry as well. Now, I have some check boxes over here in the algebra view that you can click on. This is going to turn on the equator right here, which is both a line and a circle in Euclidean geometry, or in, well, in uh, both the line and circle and spherical geometry. Okay, and we can see that. Uh, that's going to be a point. That's going to be in the x, the unit circle in the xy plane, as far as a Euclidean object. We see the north pole up here and the south pole down here. You can click on this and, and move things around uh, to look at that if you need to or want to. Okay, so we have that. We can put the uh, latitude lines, latitude or uh, longitude lines. Okay, like this. These are actually half lines for each longitude. And they are lines in spherical geometry, or at least actually each one's really a ray in spherical geometry. And if you continue it all the way around the world, it is a line. So a line in spherical geometry is going to be um, a, what we call a great circle. It's a, uh, in Euclidean geometry, it's a, it's a Euclidean object. It's a circle centered at the origin of radius the same as the sphere, in this case radius 1. Latitudes are actually circles in um, spherical geometry but they and Euclidean geometry as well, but they are not lines in Euclidean geometry. Or they are, yeah, they're not lines in, in spherical geometry or Euclidean geometry, either one. But you can show latitudes and longitudes there, and that's sort of like the same as showing the grid in uh, um, Euclidean geometry. Now, we can click on this and plot some points. And we can give it a uh, so here if we plot point, we give it its, its coordinates. We can also go over here to Euclidean point and plot a point, and it'll be on the surface like that. So we can plot a point here that we can just move around. Uh, you can see its coordinates there. You can also get, get a point here and plot points by just giving it uh, coordinates. This one, you actually give it latitude and longitude. So if you look on there, do you see how down the bottom left there? It says uh, select latitude and longitude, so that kind of tells you what you need to do. So let's say if we want to uh, click on that, we can give it a uh, latitude number, you know, let's say, uh, see, I think everything is measured in, in radians here. So point, say point one and a number, point two. And it will plot a point there. There it is in 3D XYZ coordinates. But it plots that point. 
Okay, so you can give a latitude, specify a latitude and longitude of a point. This is a point that can be moved around. That one was specified by a specific latitude and longitude. All right, we can go here and, uh, well, let's say we just make two points. We can measure the distance. Now, how's distance measured? Well, let's, let's go to here and go to line segment. So we can click on two points and make a line segment. Now, a line segment, just like in Euclidean geometry, is going to be a path of shortest distance. And if you stay on the sphere, that's going to be uh, a Euclidean line segment there. And the length of that line segment is the distance between the points, which is basically just a regular Euclidean distance, or in other words, arc length of that circle there. And so this says the distance from A to B in spherical distance is this right here. Now, there might be a shorter distance in Euclidean going through the sphere, but in spherical geometry, that's not part of the plane. The plane is just the surface of the sphere itself. Okay. And so this can, of course, it's dynamic like uh, like anything in GeoGebra. That as we move that around, it's going to change the uh, line segment there. Now, of course, if we extend a line segment, we can extend it further and get a line, extend it further and further and further, and we get a line, and you can see that that's a Euclidean uh, great circle if we take that basic idea of the shortest path and then extend it further and further, we get a a uh, Euclidean great circle that's a spherical line okay um, a spherical ray let's uh, let me let me delete a few things here let's delete this line and this line segment let's just have our two points a spherical ray is half of a line, and it goes halfway around. Now, there's always an interesting point on the, um, for any point, it's called its antipodal point, or polar opposite, like the North Pole and South Pole are antipodal points, or polar opposites. They're exactly, if you, as a Euclidean object, if you connect them up with a line segment, it would go through the origin, and it would be, on both ends there, both ends of a diameter or diametric cord of the circle of the sphere. And so uh, we have that as a, as a ray is basically a half of a line there. We can measure a longitude, we, or we can give a longitude line through a point like this, which actually is a line. It'll be a line going through the North and South Pole and that point. We can talk about a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. So again, just to keep it from getting too cluttered, let's get rid of some stuff. So if I go back to make a line segment here, I can do a perpendicular bisector of that. Okay, and notice it says select the two endpoints. So here and here, this should be a line that goes through the midpoint there of that, and it is perpendicular. So that's a right angle there. We can do perpendicular to a point on a line, select a point of intersection, then another point on the line. So let's just say we want a perpendicular at this end. We can do perpendicular uh, to a point on the line. We select the point and then some other point on the line, and it'll go perpendicular at that first point. So if I sort of move this around, you can kind of see the, see the right angle that's being formed there in those two cases. Okay, so in other words, um, you have a lot of the tools that you would normally have in Euclidean geometry uh, plane geometry, you have a lot of those same tools here. Uh, perpendicular to a point on the line, we just did that one, perpendicular to a point off the line. Well, that's a different situation, but here we have this, and if we do this, perpendicular to a point off the line, let's see, select two points on the line, then a point on the, per on the perpendicular. So these two points will identify the line, and then here. So be sure you're looking at the, the little 
hints there that'll show you which which ones that we uh, which things we need to select okay so those are some of the uh, line tools uh, we can do an antipodal point so a prime is the antipodal point that's just like so for example if a moves to the north pole the antipodal point will move to the south pole right it's exactly on the opposite side of the uh, sphere. It's the farthest point you can get away from that point. Okay. Um, let's see. What else do I have here? We have the midpoint of a line segment. We can select two points and it will select the midpoint. We have circles. Okay, we can do a circle by center at a point. Say this is the center and there's a point. Let's see, where is it? Circle by center and point. Center and then a point on the circle. Center and then point on the circle. So that's a circle there. And so this stays circle. Here, so we can see that um, latitudes are circles through. We could do a latitude through a point. Again, let me let me clear out some stuff so we don't get too cluttered here. Okay, so we can take a point here. Let's say A, or let's say B, and do a latitude through it. That's a circle. So it goes around there. Okay. Let's see what else do I have here. Latitude by number. I can click in the actual number of the latitude and put it in there. Um, the latitude, everything's done in radians here, so choose a latitude measure as a as a number, right? So, so if I do, uh, so I should be able to do latitude and select a measure for that. I need, I guess, I need to have the measure actually out here somewhere for that. Okay, I can also do angles. Now, an angle, of course, is the union of two rays. So let's go ahead and, and actually make, uh, let's put a point here. Let's get rid of that and this. Let's make, a, let's make angle B, A, D. So we can do rays first. So going from A to B and from A to D, and so there's an angle, and we want to measure that angle. Um, so angle, and then click on it, B, A, D. And it does mark that, and then give that rate, that measure. All the everything's measured in radians and the angles. So you can see what that angle would, how that angle would measure, and of course it changes as we. We move that around. Uh, you can do an angle by point, vertex, and point. So if I have three points, I can do an angle here to here to here, and it will make the angle for us as the two rays, of course. We can do an angle bisector, selected the same way. Okay, and that will measure the angle. It will put put the angle bisector for us there. Um, 
you can give an angle of a specified size. We can we can take three points and do a triangle, a uh, measured triangle there. Select the three points, and it draws the sides and measures the angle and the excess there. Talk about talk about later what what the excess is perhaps in another video. That's useful if you're messing with triangles very much. And there's a spherical type of reflection and rotation there, and then some Euclidean objects that are interesting that are related: a Euclidean tangent plane and a, and a Euclid, Euclidean tangent ray. So anyway. There's lots of cool tools that are built in. And so you could take this and use this to investigate all kinds of topics in spherical geometry, which I may explore in some later videos as we go along. But this environment is set up for you to explore yourself. You basically have all the same tools that you would normally have in, in regular Euclidean geometry. Uh, if you think about the things that are built in GeoGebra to start with, we have pretty much uh, an, uh, spherical analogs of all of them here. Uh, I will say that I had some problems in the past with these menus uh, of tools staying where I put them. So if you do get in here and uh, you can't find the tool that you're looking, look around because it will be up here somewhere, but they may get jumbled around. Um, that was just a little technical thing that has happened in the past. Hopefully that's fixed. Uh, but if not, just look around, but the tools are there somewhere. I've tried to group them in ways that make sense that are kind of similar to the ways that their uh, Euclidean uh, counterparts are um, used. Uh, the one main tool that you need, uh, well, you can use some tools over here that would make sense as well. Um, this doesn't make any sense here, but some of these circles do. Uh, Circles, cir circumcircular arc, three three points here still would work. Um, okay, you can go can can give a uh, a circle through those three points would be a uh, would still be a uh, I think that would still be a a, a circle in in ta in spherical and maybe need to ex explore that a little bit. Um, so there's some different things that we can do do there that that can can be useful. Um, the most useful one, of course, is just this one I've been using, putting a point somewhere, or perhaps doing the intersection of two objects. Those two things are very uh, very useful for us as well. So in any event, we have a, a nice little um, environment for working with spherical geometry. We'll talk in our later videos about some of the uh, some of these concepts in a little more detail as we come to them, and we'll also use this to build other uh, uh, GeoGebra activities uh, based on using these built these tools that are now built into this environment. Okay, hopefully you'll find this uh, interesting and useful for you. Enjoy it.